Hello, my name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Make sure you buy 2020 edition and not the older one. We are on page number 602. Please turn to it. Page 602, we're going to pick up from question number 9 today. If at the end of the video you decide that this was helpful and that you would like to work with me, you can always get hold of me by sending me an email at kashwaniprep at icloud.com. Let's take a look at number question number 9, the very first problem on the page, page 60602. It has a little picture, it has a little picture of the glass. It's important that you have the book in front of you, understand? Otherwise things don't make sense. There's a picture of the glass there which I'm not going to bother with right now. Let's just solve because the one we are about to do doesn't require the picture. We are told that the volume, we are told that the volume of this glass is 473 cubic meter, which we are further told that it's approximately 16 fluid ounces. This information was not going to come in handy until the next problem. Right now we just want this one. We are further told that this volume is equal to 7 times pi k cube over 48. The question simply is, what's the value of k? It just wants us to find the value of k. So let's, let's, let's do it together. So we know this quantity has to equal 473. 473. So let's erase all the extraneous information that we don't need right now, so it's not that crowded. We also need, don't need that part. This is it. This is the equation we are working with and we have to solve for k. Let's do that. It's k cubed. So please just bring the 48 to the top. So k cubed should equal 48 times 473 over 7 pi. Simple enough? Over 7 pi. And starting from there is where we are going to start approximating just to see what happens. Because if you look at the answer choices, if you look at the answer choices, the answer choices are 2 .5, 7.5, 7.7, 7.8, 10 10.1. Those are the answer choices as you can see. These two answer choices are very close to each other. So if it turns out that the approximation uh, does not get us where we want to go, then we'll worry about doing the precise calculation. But what you will find in this exam is that in vast majority of the cases, in a situation like this, when you start approximating, it really doesn't do any harm. Do you understand? Let's, let's carry on, shall we? These are too far apart, so a little, little bit of approximation is not going to do any harm. Enough of the talk, let's, let's get going. I'm going to erase this part. So let's begin the show. First thing first, I see seven, I see seven at the bottom. But unfortunately, I do not see 49 on the top. I see 48. So let's pretend that 48 is actually 49. And as soon as we do that, this is no longer an equality sign. It becomes approximately equal to. Now we can cross out the 7 with the 49. It becomes a 7. Next, we have a pi at the bottom. We have 473. We're going to pretend that pi is approximately 3. Let's just see what happens. So cross out the pi and divide top by 3. 4 divided by 3 is 1. After we take away 3 from the 4, we have a remainder of 1. 1 goes and joins a 7 and becomes 17. I'm going to pretend it's 18. And then 3 divided by 3 is 1. In other words, we did two things here. In other words, we did two things here. First thing I did is that I pretended that, I pretended that 473 is actually 483. And we pretended that pi is equal to 3. That's all. Let's find out what that is. 161 times 7. 161 times 7, it's going to be 7, 7, 7, 6 are 42, 4, 7 plus 4, there you go, you see, it is well over a thousand, it is well over a thousand, and we know, we know that 10 cube, 10 cube is 1000, 10 cube is 1000, and since this is well over a thousand, it cannot possibly be 7 or 7.7 7 or 7.8, it has to be something a little bit more than 10, obviously. The answer is D.
number 10 number 10 it's already written here I wrote it ahead of time because otherwise it would taken it would have taken too much time to write it it says the water is poured slowly at a constant rate and we're given some different graphs and our job is to identify appropriate graph that would show that would depict the height of the water in the in the glass let's look at the answer choices and we'll talk about each one of them one by one as we go through them the first one answer choice A the graph looks like this it's a linear graph obviously starting with intercept because the height is zero when there's no water in it and you start pouring at a constant pace hence the importance of the word constant when would this be true? When, when, would, when would the graph look like this if you were to measure the height of the water in the glass? Do you know? This would be the case if the glass looks something like this where the diameter of the glass was a uniform throughout this one has a, this one has a uh, 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 this one has a capacity of 16 fluid ounces so if you were to pour exactly one ounce per minute it will take 16 minutes to uh, fill up and it will and let's say this glass is 16 inches tall every one, uh, every one minute the height will go up by one inch exactly and the graph will look like this with a slope of one because you will have the ounces here and you will have the height here for every 16 uh, for every one ounce that you pour in the height goes up by one inch it will look like this but that's not the shape of the grass the glass that, that we are given is has a bigger diameter on the top than it does at the bottom. Or was it the other way around? Yeah, that's right. Which means that as you start pouring, the height goes up faster at the bottom. In the beginning, the height goes up faster because there's more diameter. And as you go reach higher, it begins to rise. It's the same because you're pouring the same amount of water per time period. Like say one fluid ounces per minute. But the height of the water will begin to rise slowly. It is Second thing, second thing that is wrong with it is because it is linear. The bloody thing is definitely not linear because we just saw, we just saw the graph of it. It, it was exponential, but we just saw the, we just saw the equation of it. It was exponential. It was something like this: seven pi k to the third, as you can see clearly. This thing is exponential. It's not linear. Let's look at answer choice B. Answer choice B is even more silly. The height is just flat. It says no matter how much water you put in, the height, the height never changes. Not only the height never changes, but even before you start pouring the water, there is some height of the water in the beginning. It's just, a, it's just plain stupid. There are only two possible answer choices here. Either it is B, which looks like this, or it is C, which looks like this. In this case, the height begins to go faster as you pour in more water. The height here begins to rise faster. That is not the case. The height will begin to go slower because it's a bigger diameter on the top. The answer is C. The height will still go up. Height will still go up, but it will go up at a slower pace. This is the height. This is this is this is the ounces that you're pouring in or the time because it's going at a constant pace. One ounce per minute for example. The answer is C. The height rises slowly as it gets filled up because the diameter on the top is much bigger than the diameter at the bottom. That's all. Other than that there is no math here to do, do you understand? They just they just want us to be able to identify the shape of the graph, that's all. Let's look at 11. 11 says that we have a picture which is one gallon and we are further told that one gallon equals 128 fluid ounces this is a continuation this is a continuation of the same glass that we are talking about and the problem tells us in the beginning that the capacity of the glass is approximately 12 fluid ounces the question simply is how many glasses If you, were to, if you were to take a picture, a, a picture which has, I won't tell you a picture of what, I'm going to leave that to your imagination. Um, so if you were to take a picture and you start pouring glasses, same, same size glasses, how many glasses will you pour before you run out, run out of you know what? Let's find out, shall we? It's just 128 over 12. 
128 over 12. And that's all it is. 128 over 16 rather not 12. Well, it's definitely not. It's definitely not. It's not. It's not. It's not C, because C says 4, and 4 times 16 is just 64. And it's definitely not D, because D says 3. 16 times 4 is 64, we're looking at 128, so what we realize is that 128 is exactly 2 times 64. It's not 4, it is 8. If you divide it out, you'll find that 16 times 8 is 128. That's all. But that's not how I looked at it. I'm going to show you if you're curious as to how I did it. First answer choice that you see there, the answer choice A, it says 16. A says 16. So I'm just telling you what went through my mind. Okay, I did not do what I just explained to you. What went through my mind is that immediately I realized it cannot possibly be C or D. Because C, I, I, I knew right away that 16 times 4 is 64. I just knew it. I just knew it. 64 is not 128. Even though I can clearly see it's twice as much. But I didn't go that route. And, and if it's not 4, it's definitely not 3. The next thing that came to my mind is that I know that 16 squared is 256. I know my square. 16 squared is 256. And 128 is exactly half of that. So if 256 divided by 16 is 16, then 128, which is half of 256, 128 divided by 16 has to be 8. I'm giving you too much explanation. Number 12. In number 12, in number 12, we have some guy who's selling insurance policies. And he sells two kinds of insurance policies. He sells two, two kinds of insurance policy, cheap ones, and we're going to call that C. C will represent the number of cheap insurance policy that he sells, and the cheap ones are $50,000 each and he sells the expensive one and we're going to call that E and expensive ones are $100,000 each and we are further told that he wants to sell he wants to wants to sell at least 57 he wants to sell at least 57 policies. In other words, if C represents the number of cheap insurance policy and E represents the number of expensive insurance policy, then what he wants is C plus E to be greater than or equal to 57. To be greater than or equal to 57. They further go on to tell us that he did not, did, did not, he did not manage it. This insurance agent wanted to sell 57 policies, at least 57 policies, in other words C plus E had to be greater than or equal to 57, but then they go on to tell us that the poor guy did not manage it, which means this is no longer true. The last thing they tell us is that even though he did not manage his goal in terms of number of policies that he wanted to sell, but he did manage to sell a total of Over, over three million dollars worth of policies. So let's do, let's look towards the top. We already have one in, one inequality right here. Here's the other inequality. If he sells C number of cheap insurance policy and each one of them is fifty thousand dollars, that represents the value of the cheap insurance policies. And if he sells E number of expensive insurance policies and he each one of them is hundred thousand. 100 times E would represent the value of the expensive insurance policy and we are told that this value is greater than 3 million and we also know that C plus E is not is not greater than 57 so there you go just go through the answer choices and see which one matches that's what it is it's not A it's not A because in A, the total is less than 3 million. It's not B, because C plus E, they tell us it's greater than 57. C plus E is not greater than 57. Greater than 57 is what he wanted, but he didn't manage it. 
And similarly, it is not D, because in D that tells us again the C plus E is more than 57, which it is not. The answer is C. The answer of this problem is C. That was number 12. Number 13 says that a raised to negative one half is equal to x. They just want us to solve for a. a or x? Interesting. Number 13. What's the value of x, not a? What is the, what is A in terms of, A? oh they want us to solve for A. Alright, well, let's see what we can do. So, it has a negative exponent, let's write this as 1 over A raised to 1 half, becomes a positive exponent, and that is equal to X, and instead of writing it, instead of writing it as 1 half, exponent as 1 half, red put this is root, root of A, and we want to solve for a. If we want to solve for a, let's bring the a to this side and bring the x to the bottom. And if we do that, what we find is that 1 over x will equal root of a. There we go, we are almost there. We can't leave it like this. We don't want to solve for the root of a, we want to solve for a. So let's square both sides. There we go. And this will give us a right here. Square or square root of a is just a. And on this side, when we square it, we end up as we end up at one over x squared. There you go. A equals a equals one over x squared. And that is answer choice C. Let's look at number 14. Number 14. This is negative 3 over x squared plus 3x minus 10 is undefined when x is equal to what? For, in other words, for what value of x is this expression undefined? Well, first thing we need to answer, answer ourselves is under what circumstances will this become undefined before we worry about exactly which, at what value of x it will happen. The first question is, what, is the, what are the circumstances, what is the condition where this expression will become undefined? It will become undefined if we have negative 3 on the top, if whatever that we see in the bottom here, if this bottom happens to be 0, then any number divided by 0, it becomes undefined. I don't know why I'm putting approximately, it becomes undefined. So all we have to do is solve this quadratic equation, find out when, where, what, at what value of x is this expression, this quadratic equation is equal to 0. Let's do it. That's all they want. So x squared plus 3x minus 10, when this becomes 0, bottom will become 0 and negative 3 over 0 will become undefined. I just want to make sure that I did not make a mistake copying the equation x squared plus 3x minus 10. There we go. Let's begin, shall we? So we're looking for two numbers whose product has to be negative 10 and whose two numbers whose sum has to be positive 3. It's very simple. The two numbers are going to be positive 5, positive 5, and a negative 2. Positive 5x and a negative 2x will give us a positive 3x and positive 5x and a negative 2x, positive 5x times negative 2x will give us our negative 10 x x, negative 10 x squared. Let's take out x common from these two terms. And here we have negative 2 and negative 10. Let's take out negative 2 as a common factor. That will give us x and a positive 5. Because positive 5 and a negative 2 will give us negative 10. And again here we have negative 5, uh, x plus 5 as a common factor. And we're left with x from here and negative 2 from here. There you go. So this 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 thing, this quadratic equation we see on the top will become 0 when when x 
x is equal to when x is equal to negative 5 or when x is equal to positive 2. There we go. Negative 5 is not one of the answer choices. Negative 5, obviously, we're not going to have two right answers. They only give us the positive root, and the positive root is, is shown in answer choice D. Answer choice D is the right answer because that's where we see positive 2. That's all. That was the end of that page. We're not going to start a new page right now because otherwise the videos tend to be very long. We'll meet again tomorrow. We'll continue. We'll pick up from where we left off. In the meantime, if you wish to speak with me, if you wish to get hold of me, as I said before, send me an email at kishwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright? Bye now.